My name is uh, William Holland. Uh, my nickname is Buddy. A lot of people call me Buddy. I'm from uh, Kansas City, Missouri. And for the hobbies, uh, you know, sports, football, basketball, running and working out. November the 21st of 2020 on a Saturday, uh, I was at work and I took my break around four o'clock, took me a nap, and when I got up at 4.15, I wasn't feeling well. Miss Tennille Holland, and I am uh, Mr. Holland's sister. Um, should I go home or should I just make it through eight hours? And I did. Monday uh, morning on November the 23rd, uh, my sister set up an appointment. So he told me that he didn't go to work. And I said, okay, well, I'll go ahead and I'll get you set up for a um, COVID test because this was right in the middle of the pandemic. And so I was thinking, oh, wow, maybe he has COVID. And during that time, uh, I was sitting and waiting there and I was falling asleep, wasn't feeling well, and they did the COVID test. So then after that, I went home and went to sleep. Started having the shakes, having uh, diarrhea. At 2 a.m. on November 24th, I woke up. My speech was slurred, I could barely walk. And so I called my parents, and they called my sister, and they said that you need to go to the uh, uh, hospital. Can you drive yourself or you need to call the ambulance? And, you know, so by this time, I, I sat straight up because I've never had a call from my brother like that before. And I said, okay. I said, well, wait a minute now. So, you know, what are you feeling? He said that he had a headache. He just, it sounded like COVID symptoms. But I looked down the hall, my daughter, her light was on and her door was open. I had the door open and so I kind of heard the phone call. And so I just kind of like, just got quiet. And I heard Holy Spirit say, call, call 911, call 911. I walked to my mom's room, I was like, hey, like, you need a call, 911, like, go ahead and call now. And so I said, uh, well, you know, maybe we don't need to call the paramedics right now. I said, well, let's just kind of see what the test results bring back. I was pondering, should I uh, try to make it to go over to the hospital because it's not too far, but I uh, couldn't. And my daughter said, she interrupted, she said, mama, no, Holy Spirit said he needs to go. I looked at her and then I said, hey, okay, I'm calling the paramedics right now. I finally got up, unlocked the door, I had to go to the uh, restroom. My dad was already there before the paramedics. He had me on video. Um, they got, the paramedics got there to um, Buddy's place. And he, um, and we saw them, they had, they had him on a gurney and they, they took him on. Um, even the EMT said, we don't believe this is COVID. My name is Billy Holland and William, we call him Buddy. Uh, he's, he's my son. Miranda Brewer and I am William Buddy Holland's first cousin. My name is Vernon York. My relationship with Mr. Holland is a very, very good friend, uh, brother in Christ, and also a co-worker. My name is Eric Riddle. Relationship with William is he's my friend, and he's been my friend uh, over 18 years now. Well, my name is Liana Halp, and I am Mr. Holland's niece. Well, when we found out that Buddy got sick, it was definitely a shock because he's always been a very health-conscious person. He's been an athlete most of his life, um, from baseball to football, uh, you name it. If, if, if it had a sport or a ball, Buddy was involved. We, when I say we, my daughter and I, we um, got in the car and uh, we headed over to Centerpoint, um, to the emergency room. Right in the middle of COVID, it was only one person that can go in to um, be with um, William. I was the one designated to go. So I went in, I saw him in the um, emergency room. I said, you, you, are you okay? And immediately, I knew something wasn't right. They didn't know what was going on. They asked me, have you been, uh, you know, tough question, have you been sleeping around? Have you been using drugs? 
Hey, you been using unprotected sex or whatever. They know what's going on. And fortunately, I said no. And so during that time, I was wondering what was going on. I didn't feel like eating or nothing. While we were talking, um, he began to just get really slurish, slurish, you know, in his talking. And like I said, it came out of nowhere. And so uh, we started, uh, when I wanted to find out his status, uh, his progress, you know, he couldn't tell me himself. So they move him to upstairs to a room and it is one level up from ICU. Fever is still out of control. They have him on two different types of antibiotics. It was unbelievable because Buddy is healthy. So days go by, um, I began to meet the team, but he had at least a seven team of doctors that would come in because they were baffled. They did not know what what was going on. One of the doctors come in and said, let me check your knee out. And so they stick a huge needle down in my knee and it was a whole bunch of affection. And uh, my sister was on FaceTime. I always have told him that the Lord is gonna give him a miracle. I always felt that. I said, you know, because I know this is not your lot in life. You know, there's a way out of this. And it's going to take a supernatural intervention from God. And uh, so, uh, as we was talking, I always tell him to talk up. Never talk down. Uh, they stuck the needle down in there. They said you had been infected with called septic arthritis. You need to have emergency surgery. Because, you know, mind you, uh, Come to find out, you know, my speech was slurred. I, I couldn't walk. My kidneys wasn't working. And I had a legion on my brain. I really didn't know how bad I was until maybe later on. It was gonna take prayer. I knew that it, it was gonna take literally the power of God to change and fix my brother's situation. And that in the medical condition. At first I didn't know what to think, but being a woman of God and coming from a spirit-filled family, uh, the first thing we normally do is pray. In a few moments of prayer to just kind of settle down and kind of ask the Lord, okay, What's going on here? Um, that the Lord got him, and uh, no matter what, he, he may think, you know, why, why he's going through this, and it's, and it's okay to answer, to ask God, why? Why me? Why, why not me? And then sometimes you want to say, why not me? You know, God has a special purpose and a plan for each and every one of us, um, and so uh, as we continue to live and trust in, in him, he's going to bring us through that plan, but then on the other side, it's when we can smile and see the sun up. You know, well, what, what is it that you're taking Buddy through? Is, is this something that is an attack on him? Um, is this a test for him? Is this just something that happens in life with these mortal perishable bodies? Father, what is going on here? I'm Kelsey, uh, Will's physical therapist. And I'm Erin, um, and I'm the physical therapist assistant. We first came in and seen uh, the condition he was in that day with walking and not really putting his foot anywhere close to the ground um, was kind of an eye-opener of we got a long way to go here. Um, at first, um, I think Kelsey and I were both pretty nervous about how much his range of motion was limited at that time and how his quads did not want to respond to what we were doing. There's a delicate balance of trying to encourage him to continue having the drive and wanting to get better, but without like promising those things right off the bat. Will told me in his initial evaluation that he had been running half marathons. I could feel the grief in it and I could empathize with that grief because um, at the time I was running as well and I I knew how much he wanted to get back to running and I was not confident in giving him hope that he would run again at that point in time. I was trying to focus him on more short-term goals at the time so that we could 
just make sure that his gait was more symmetrical and normalized before we looked at longer term goals. When I first met William, I, I didn't work with him personally. I had a trainer that was working with him, but uh, every time he came in the gym, man, he had a huge smile on his face and it was exciting to watch him train with her. And then uh, when we got the phone call, uh, it, it was quite devastating to us. We were really rocked as a, as a gym and as a family. So we had to try to collaborate with other people that had spoke with them. And, you know, William as he is, you know, he, he works hard to get back at it. And man, he, he bounced back and we were able to start getting phone calls and, and messages and getting more of the pieces kind of put together. And uh, we knew he had a long road ahead of him, um, but if there's anybody that can really do it, William can. source for his perseverance was the Holy Spirit. The source of his perseverance is that that he had within him. And, uh, you know, it, it was by the grace of God that, uh, you know, that we can stand here on today and be able to, to do this and to, to give thanks and, and glory to God uh, for the things that uh, he's done in, in, in his life and will still continue to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 